Who else profits from this? Kim Trails and Monsanto's new aluminum resistance gene. We have the disaster capitalist. Monsanto is now going to save the day, apparently, with their drought-resistant, aluminum-resistant seeds. If you talk to people in Shasta County or anywhere around the country, most of them will say they're having great difficulty growing anything. The soils have been sterilized. Fungus is taking over. It's just like in the human body. When you kill all the good microbes, funguses take over. Same is happening in the environment right now. Geoengineers pulled off toxic cooldown. This is another article reiterating what I mentioned earlier. This is why this issue is so confusing for people when they have a, a very cold event somewhere and people think, well, gee, you know, the, nothing's wrong with the climate. Uh, you take geoengineering out of the equation, it'll be quite clear to all of us how much damage they have done to the climate. Protracted drought everywhere. Africa appears to be one area where a lot of experimentation has gone on over a lot of years. And now there's U.S. boots on the ground in 150 countries around the globe. And it appears to us, who have examined this issue in earnest, that countries are droughted out and literally brought to their knees. And then they allow a U.S. presence in those countries. And it appears to be related to resources. So we can't prove this. No, we can't prove this. It's like the 50-year chain smoker who dies of cancer, lung cancer. You can't prove that the smoking killed him. But we can say the dots damn sure connect. And it appears geoengineering is being used as a weapon around the globe right now, not just by us. I don't mean to just implicate the US. It, you know, we, we believe Russia and China are actively involved as well. This is, off the, this is off our coast. This involves us. If you look at those trails, unless those planes, again, were damn confused about where they were flying and doing loops at the bottom, they blanket spray off our coast every day. This blocks the hydrological cycle. If anybody wonders why the rain is always late, always less, where I live in Shasta County, I'm almost 200 inches of rain short for the last seven years. 200. The storms always drop less than they say, with very few exceptions, the occasional deluge. And we see sat photos like this every day. They're blanket spraying the entire eastern Pacific. That simply blocks our water, period. Geoengineering and global drought. The planet is warmer. We should have more rain. The laws of physics state this very clearly. 7% more moisture for every degree of warming. We have less. How can that be? Geoengineering is the only explanation, black to global dimming. They are literally encasing the planet in this toxic cloud of aluminum. Okay, this relates to us as well. If you look at this map, the darker red colors are on the top map. That's above average temperatures. On the bottom map where you see the B and the dark colors, that's below normal rainfall. This is typical for California in recent years. As the storms come through, they aerosolize them. They create clouds, but not much rain falls. So we have actually cooler zones during much of the time along the western coast, not lately, but the experimentation appears to change. And we have below normal rainfall. And that's because as they aerosolize those clouds, they migrate that moisture. Okay? It doesn't fall on us. It migrates somewhere else. And let's see what we, what we see happening with that. The U.S. drought monitor. So what do we see? And this, is, this map's a, a little dated, but the current map is almost the same. We see a line from north to south about in the center part of the country. On one side of that line, you have extreme drought. The other side, you have extreme flooding. And this is exactly what we'd expect with geoengineering. It causes drought and deluge. You migrate water from one place to another in a very haphazard way. You throw the whole system out of balance. And this is what we have now. And if we continue on this track, this is what North, the North State will look like, along with much of the rest of the Western U.S. High stakes fight over water rights. I think we've seen this before. You create the disaster, and you use that as the premise by which you acquire rights, right? We've seen that before, even with the Patriot Act and things like that. Water rights are being very actively pursued by the federal government around the Western U.S., and we believe this is a part of this equation. This is a multi-layered onion. I'm not trying to pin it on just this or that. But there appears to be many things that they are trying to accomplish and, and putting life on Earth at risk in the process. Chemtrails have increased electrical conductivity in the atmosphere for three, from 3 to 20 times. This is increasing lightning, as we stated. We see a lot more lightning, a lot less rain now, a lot more fires. Inside insurance lightning strikes on the increase. Climate Emergency Institute. This regards atmospheric oxygen. As you see the bottom of the graph as it heads toward the right, that indicates rapidly depleting global oxygen content. No oxygen, no life on Earth. I think we all are clear on this, and, and it is decreasing rapidly. When you acidify the oceans from the methane release, when you poison the boreal forests and you burn the boreal forests, the Earth's oxygen making capacity is greatly diminished. And the less oxygen we have, the more physical ailments we'll have, period. 
More fish die off. We see that happening again around the globe. Oxygen depletion, depletion, the next great environmental scare. As we indicated, a lot of science available on this for those who choose to look. U.S. wildfires, as we discussed, rapidly on the increase. Last year, Siberia lost 100 million acres of forest, 100 million. The U.S. lost about 11 million. And this year, again, could be absolutely cataclysmic. We are, on, we are in uncharted waters in the Pacific Northwest now, in California. We have record low fuel moistures, record high temperatures, and it, it looks like the scheduled weather, and I use that term specifically, the, the scheduled weather for us is much more of the same. So we could be in for quite the ride this year. Now, what's this doing to species? This is biodiversity plummeting. Species extinction rates are going through the roof. Would media, you think they would talk about this instead of grabbing some drama out of a hat every week to entertain us while the house is literally burning down? Species diversity is plummeting. Species extinction rates, you see the graph going straight up. Based on the latest figures, we're losing some 200 species a day. 200 a day. And people say, well, things have always gone extinct. Yes, they have, but not at that rate. That rate reflects 10,000 times background extinction rates. That's a million percent of normal. That's not natural. There is no cyclical pattern in this that's natural in any way. It's about as natural as saying people die. You know, that's natural too, but you put a gun to somebody's head and pull the trigger, they're gonna die a lot sooner. Geoengineering is the single greatest environmentally destructive factor on the planet Earth right now, period. But they're simply too heavily invested to turn back. They'll do everything to hide it, we believe, but if we could simply bring it to light, I believe those participating would cease. The Earth's sixth great mass extinction is occurring as you read this, get more documentation. Geoengineering, runaway climate change, and the poisoning of life on Earth. Again, I want to stress, this is not about Al Gore. It's not about the environmental groups that have been horribly lame in this equation. While they're focusing on uh, some fish or frog and the house is burning down, I've never seen such complacency from people who claim to care. I know a lot of these people who claim to care and yet they cannot find the courage in themselves to face this issue above all others, to unite with those who are willing to face this issue. So we, we now, in fact, I believe, based on all available data, face a scenario of a runa runaway greenhouse effect. If they continue to spray, they continue to shred the ozone, they continue to poison the boreal forest, they continue to alter the wind and water currents, and people who live around here must know that the weather patterns are horribly different. Even when I moved here in 2000, when the storm came in, you could see the cyclonic rotation coming in. The wind blew, the clouds were overhead. You didn't have this melted together sky, this, this uh, featureless sky with very little wind. The rain comes less. It just it drizzles here and drizzled there. They have radically skewed our weather equation. If they continue to do this, we will face what's called a runaway greenhouse effect. I'll elaborate on that in a minute. One of the players involved, Raytheon. Now, this is important too. People need to understand the foxes are running the hen house. Raytheon is up to their eyeballs in weather modification. Raytheon does all the weather modeling for the National Weather Service and the National Oceanic Administration. So those who are making the weather, they form the message. They're the ones telling us what it's going to be like. Do you wonder what partly, what does uh, mostly sunny mean? What does that mean? Mostly sunny now means a sky full of sprayed aerosols. That's their term. They've, they've coined lots of new terms because, again, Raytheon does all the modeling for National Weather Service and NOAA. Uh, Lockheed Martin, by the way, does all the modeling for the FAA. Now, let's, let's put the Rothschilds into the equation. I, I realize this sounds very conspiratorial, but in fact, they, are, they, they do own the major weather disseminating agencies, Weather Channel, Weather Underground, Weather Central. So here we have players that are up to their eyeballs behind the scenes in the global geoengineering operations also controlling the message. That's why Weather Channel now has terms like, the rain is going to change over to snow. Well, since when did rain just change over to snow without orographic enhancement? It means moving over mountains or without colliding with a cold air mass. Why would rain change over to snow at 45 degrees? Because it's being chemically nucleated. We have the patents for this process. We know what's going on. We've tested the snow. The Chinese admitted they were doing it. So they have all these terms now to make people go back to sleep and think it's normal. They call it heavy, wet snow again, this concrete snow that destroys everything. And, you know, so that's why... It's frequently to have these, these events, like I mentioned, Amarillo, Texas, 100 degrees one day, snow the next. People should know this is not natural weather or cyclical patterns. Again, more Rothschilds ownership, Rothschilds in the geoengineering empire. U.S. military explores geoengineering, which we know that they have uh, for many, many years. There's too many journalists now, especially of late, they're writing books and doing articles saying, describing everything we see, everything. 
the attention to disperse these aerosols at altitude using aircraft, and, and yet nobody admits to the elephant in the room. This is the king has no clothes scenario, but we think they can't hide it much longer. Systemic denial of geoengineering continues in spite of the mountain of evidence. This is what we see with mainstream media. Good old Al Gore. Matt Lauer exposes Al Gore's hypocrisy. I think we know enough about Al Gore um, to know where he fits in this equation, but I, I want to stress, you gotta get him out of, out of the equation. This is about real damage being done on the ground. Uh, uh, climate has been horrifically damaged by geoengineering alone. This is a flyer we did in Northern California. We're using this type of tool to introduce others to this issue while we can, and I, I want to stress, as we see skies like this, as they do this day in, day out, as we breathe what they're spraying day in, day out, as we continue to be a part of their experiment and they shred the atmosphere, time is not on our side. It is not on our side. I chose, I chose to take on geoengineering not because I wanted something to do. This is the last thing I ever wanted to do. I, I've had my life on hold for 10 years because I believe, based on all available data, after I did considerable research and testing on this issue, if geoengineering does not stop, nothing else will matter. I believe absolutely nothing else will matter, and that brings us to Venus Syndrome. This is a scientific scenario, and we are on this track. Many people think that Venus is 900 degrees on the ground because it's closer to the sun. This is not true. Venus, now based on the latest study, was thought to have oceans, but it experienced a runaway greenhouse effect. As the atmosphere is filled with, in our case, methane, and this continues to trap heat, causes these feedback loops which feed on themselves once they are triggered. Then the warming does not stop till the planet reaches a new equilibrium. If we stay on this track, we will end up there. And this is not a linear equation. I want to stress that. We can't look back and say, well, civilization's gone on 200 years, so at this particular trajectory, it'll take another 100 years for this to happen. This is a non-linear equation. It is happening at blinding speed right now. I believe even in the coming months and year, two or three years, I, I mean, I, I think that the effects that we will see based on what's already been triggered can't be hidden and the, the, the cataclysmic nature of these effects will become evident. It's imperative that we let the planet respond. The planet must be allowed to respond on its own. No one has the right to play God with the weather, and we will all bear the consequences of this. So Venus is as warm as it is. The whole premise of geoengineering is to block the sun, to create a greater albedo for the planet. Albedo means reflectivity. Venus has two and a half times the reflectivity of Earth. It absorbs less sun than Earth. And yet, Venus is 900 degrees on the ground because of its greenhouse effects. So again, it's imperative that we stop geoengineering, stop hampering the planet's ability to try to compensate for damages done. This is our site, Geoengineering Watch. There's only a couple of us that really do this, but there's more and more starting to help now. All of us can contribute to this greatly, and this is how you do it. From your own home computer, if you locate groups, organizations, and individuals that would care if they had a clue, so many people don't have a clue about this issue, and you get credible data, you send them that data, send them some credible documentation and files, plead with them to examine this, and I mean groups like Alzheimer's groups, autism groups, um, the uh, ADD groups, uh, forestry groups, fishing groups, all of these groups are affected. If you send them credible data, send them a flaming arrow, as people take notice of the climate unraveling, and it is unraveling, geoengineering is fueling that fire, those, those flaming arrows will catch, many of them will catch. If you arm yourself with flyers, for example, to pass out, and we, we have a lot of credible flyers, you can download them off geoengineeringwatch.org um, for free, and if you pass those out, it does a lot more good than running out in the street, ranting and pointing at the sky. I believe this, that if we could bring this to the light of day, if we could make mainstream media cover this, if we could get critical mass of awareness, enough people who participate and make these programs possible would refuse. I have been contacted by scientists from four major universities in previous months, Stanford, Duke, Harvard, UC of Florida. A scientist from Stanford, who Stanford's definitely involved with these programs, has told me that there are people on the inside participating in this research that now are pulling back, they're refusing to because they realize the cataclysm it's causing. And I believe enough people, especially from the US military, who we have incredibly dedicated, honorable people in the US military that are being told this is something they, they need to do, they must do, uh, it's for the good of the planet. When they realize what this is doing to the planet, their countrymen rely on, their children rely on, I believe those honorable men and women, women will pull back, that they will, they will certainly be on our side. We simply need to bring this to light. If we could bring it to light, it would change our equation radically for the better. 
that's my goal. That's why I'm here. That's my mission. Thank you very much for attending, and I, I appreciate all of your efforts toward this goal. Thank you.